ESPN's presentation of the Owens Corning NIT Postseason Tournament is presented by Owens Corning. At Owens Corning, we know homes. And in part by Circuit City. We know how you feel. That's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. And by Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Life. Are you ready for a cold one? Well, from Madison Square Garden, it is the second of two semifinal Owens Corning NIT ball games tonight. And in this nightcap, it is Syracuse taking on the Gamecocks of South Carolina at the Southeastern Conference. Let's take a look at the brackets. Our first game complete. A one-point victory, 78-77 to 77 by Memphis. And in this one right here, the winner will take on Memphis for the NIT championship at 9 o'clock Eastern on a Thursday evening. Hello once again, everybody. Ron Franklin along with the governor, Bill Raftery. And instead of talking about this ball game to start off with, we're going to talk about a totally unusual situation. I want to know if this has ever happened to you or you've seen it happen. South Carolina's the home team tonight. They came out in all white, which they should have done. But Syracuse came out thinking they were the home team. They have all white. And, Bill, they have just sent a trainer with a police escort back to Times Square to their hotel to pick up the road uniforms. We're going to have a delay. We don't know exactly how long. It may have been easy to go back to Syracuse and get the away <laughs> uniforms and go back to the hotel. Now, I, I, I'm curious to see who Jim Beheim's going to blame on this one. Uh, Jay Kraft Hamill has got to be his fault. He's the athletic director. But it usually goes down the podium. Uh, and I think Bernie Fine and then Mike Hopkins, Troy Weaver, that's the way it'll go. But this is very unusual. I mean, there'll be a consistent call if they have to play. It will always be white ball. White ball. Larry Rose said he has never seen a situation like this, nor the two umpires that are working with him tonight. So we'll take a break. We'll come back with more. And it's Uniform Gate at Madison Square Garden in the NIT. I wear my K-Swiss in the city. At the mall. <laughs> At my place with my crew. Yeah. I like them white and new. I wear my K-Swiss. I'll see you with my friends. To the movies. At the park. In my ride. I wear mine on top. With my jeans. In a skirt. In my sweats. On my chest. While we're checking out the girls. When I want to look my best. At a party. To the beach. Outside. I like my K-Swiss fresh out of the box. I wear my K-Swiss. This is my brother Andrew. Starting practice. The boys and I share a love for baseball, so we took a little trip this summer. This is me acting really goofy. We went to four different major league ballparks in the Hall of Fame. They brought back lots of pictures. I would only put these in the hands of people at Walmart. You can afford to take more pictures with Walmart because the prices are great. And we sent a couple of pictures to Heidi's dad online. We got to run the bases at Double Day Field. That was awesome. I think the boys had a great time. And we have these pictures to remind us of it. Yeah. Look at these posers and wannabes. I mean those chicken fingers. Merely posing is spicy. You gotta try new KFC Blazing Crispy Strips. All white breast meat chicken, freshly prepared, double marinated with a taste of chili and cayenne pepper for twice the spice. For limited time, KFC's got new spicy Blazing Strips. Get three strips, coleslaw, and a biscuit for only $2.99. Also available in the Colonel's Crispy Strips, the flavor that started it all. Everybody in. I think the party's out here. <laughs> there's fast food, and then there's KFC. Madison Square Garden in New York City. Uh, the second Owens Corning semifinal game of the night. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. And we have just been told we're going to start this ball game with both teams wearing white. So, Williams, Dwayne, Theus, Shumpert, and Fort. And it's going to be Lucas Bradley, Ibsen, Howell, and Kitchens. And you know what? No similar number. So the refs have a little break. It won't be white five, Pally white five. Your biggest error could come from someone at the scorer's table because it's white fouling. So it should be a concern. Uh, Preston Shepard healthy. They play better. Syracuse shooting the ball. The dilemma for South Carolina is the puzzle of the interior of the zone. Big concern of Dave Odom as he prepared today. Well, fourth is going to jump it up against Rolando Howell. Larry Rose tosses the ball up, and it's going to be South Carolina to go on offense first. How about and, Syracuse? And White in 2-3. <laughs> the Q's in a 2-3 matchup with Benjamin Principles. As you can see, obviously, the trim in orange by Syracuse. And the darker red by South Carolina. In the middle, Kitchens has the ball taken away. And out of bounds, I believe, as Kitchens ran over nice 
collective defense there, fourth stepping into the area and then getting topside straight. Pitching is one of the reasons that uh, South Carolina has had a surge to end this season. He really came on with double doubles in the Southeastern Conference Tournament and has continued it. Now, you and I have been around a long time. I don't think I've seen the team improve from beginning to end like South Carolina. I saw them in Maui. And this has just been a great effort. You're right. Pitchy, nice cut here by Schumper. What a save. Good look by Williams on the pass, almost coming up with a nice assist on the play, but it's knocked away in 13 seconds on the shot clock. And nice play by Jamel Bradley from the back. Was the mentor 623 wins? Oh my goodness! And never a grown. Shepard off the mark on that one. Skying for the rebound is Howell. And as Jim told me yesterday at the coach's press conference, he said, our defense has been consistent. It's our shooting that has let us down. When we shoot well, we're a very decent basketball team. Uh, it's, it's sort of a slight comment to the public, but it reinforces and energizes your philosophy when you make shots. South Carolina trying to rush the tempo. Just a little bit. Nice denial by Quint Twainy. Maybe one pass too many by the Gamecocks. Shumpert. And... I think Bradley is the one who's going to pick up the foul. Yeah, a little small change out in the perimeter. Now, I know you played a little hoops in your day. The worst you did were skins and shirts. <laughs> right? I mean, that's the way you would do it. That's how you would identify one of them. Well, this is shirts and shirts, similar colors. Well, you better know the facial expression of your teammate if you're going to have a turnover. Yeah, that's right. I thought that maybe South Carolina might keep their warm-up tops on because that's a very obvious thing because they're dark. But no numbers on it. Oh, well, you're right. That's the difference. Even more mystery. Though. On the floor, nice pass right uh, into traffic and it's going to be stolen by Ipsen. Lucas at the other end pulls up and rattles down the jumper from 10 feet. And that's what they know them once. An early push, even if you don't get a good look, Get back, get yourself a little energy. Don't become stale and stand still against the 2 3 zone. We talked about that in the first ball game, and you might reiterate it exactly what he was trying to, to make the point to us is that could happen against a, uh, a zone defense. Tip inside, and I believe it's going to be Craig Worth, a fourth. Right, fourth, right. A good spot there. Nice soft delivery by Shepard. Look at the size of the zone on the front of that. It takes away passing angles. Bouncer quickly inside and Kitchings fouled by Ford. And Dave Odom also felt his defense had come along and, and right here, whenever you dribble drive and you get by people, uh, people step up to play Shumpert, in this case fourth, just slips into the proper area. There's Dave Odom a long time. Sort of director, I would think, is the title of that five-star camp. And you know, just a wonderful guy. I mean, he's been involved in basketball all his life. His assistant going back to Terry Holland. His great job at Wake and eventually out to South Carolina where he's really helped them become better this year. Well, they battle for the ball over on the sideline. It's going to go back to Syracuse as both free throws are missed. You know, one point on the team that he inherited, uh, Dave Odom said that Eddie Fogler left seven or eight really good players in the rest of the end of this guy spotting it. Nice speed to get forth to the box. Got to come up with that one. Nice look by Theus. Well, Forth trying to make his move before he caught the basketball successfully. And a quick entry into the ball game comes Marius Petrovicius. Youngster out of Lithuania. We understand that the uniforms are now behind the bench. So as Bill Raftery commented just before the game started, he said this will definitely be a uniform timeout. And not in so. terms of similarity, <laughs> but here they are. And you know what this brings back a memory of Abe Lemons playing here at the Garden. I believe it was against Duke. And they were wiped out at halftime. And he sent the manager inside to get the pennies and they scrimmaged. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Olave. Well, it looks like that they're going to go, they'll put on the dark jerseys. I assume that they will change uh, the shorts at halftime. Well, it's the garment center of the world. Maybe they have the maid. <laughs> it could happen in New York. You never know. We're going to take a break, but uh, don't go away. I mean, don't worry. You'll see this on Sports Center for the next week. <laughs> 
Pardon the interruption. 5.30 weekdays on ESPN. Again at 7 on ESPN2. New high endurance deodorant soap made just for guys. Maybe now women will think about you every 5.3 seconds. New from Old Spice. I sacrificed my weekends. It's something I've never seen. I mean, it's just, it's just incredible. But nevertheless, you still got to play. Lucas looking inside. Comes back over to Edson. And Ron, what this does to Itson, I think it takes away a lot of his talent, his soul. You see, he finds people, although right here is pretty good penetration with the bounce. Can't get it to go, and it's going to be Forth who will tip the ball back out. You can see the shot by Itson, who's a southpaw. There are five lefties on the South Carolina basketball team. And, you know, defensively, that's a dilemma on occasion. Nice use of the curl. Williams had to travel. But getting back to Itson, he is a point forward mentality. Finds people, very creative, brings the ball up. I mean, just like a point guard, sees over people. I'm just so impressed with him. He's done with his game since the Maui days. Nice cut to the line. And the ball knocked away, puts it on the floor, gets it over to Howell, and he can't get it to go. This Travis just should have had that and finished it. When he came away with it, and now they reset it. Something very good without the basketball. Something Gibson's going to have to be concerned with and have to help. Hold up, jumper. Won't go, and uh, Deshaun Williams continues to have his shooting woes. Coming down the stretch, he just really went into a cold spot. Yeah, they need him to to ring the bell. He's such a force. Nice kick opposite. Three off the mark. First by Janelle Bradley tonight, and they run it quickly. Nice look inside, but the pass a little too far, and they'll bring it back outside to reset it. Still tied at two, and we've almost Dwayne, played the first five minutes, and Dwayne says, hey, let me have it out here beyond the yard. And he did a great job hustling to save the ball. They got himself parked deep in the corner. More on it. So his head coach said we've had three different guys play the point, but it seemed as though we got the ball in the right location and better and quicker, more efficiently with him there. A nice cut by him as Bradley finds it. And able to run and able to get down. Fourth again gets that bounce. About to hit the 15-minute mark. 5-2 Syracuse. Time for a uniform change. <laughs> South Carolina, one of the great improvements that they made this year is defensively, and as I mentioned, Jimmy Beheim said, it's just our shooting. Our defense has been pretty doggone consistent all year. So, low score, and we expected that. And this is a, they're taking advantage of the size here. Good help by South Carolina on Shumpert. Shot clock at seven, distance job, and in and out did everything but go down. Very unlucky on that shot. And the push, even if they don't get anything, strong. How? Travis. Pretty good save by a nice use of the floor here. Bradley, he says, I'll go on the baseline, and Syracuse will get the turnover. Nice kick here. Three turnovers, South Carolina, and Itson with the foul. And you can see Theus with a good delivery to the half court area. Let others make the decision. A good counter. They're always facing out in this zone. And a 2 3 look, and here the diagonal pass. And Winning with the one hand maybe cost himself an opportunity for a three-point play. But good aggressive pursuit by the Qs. South Carolina with their second team foul. The first on uh, Chuck Gibson. By the way, he led at the SEC in steals with 86 this year. Well, I'm impressed he's shooting it better. And, and even the decisions, which have been good, seem to be better. Seems to have taken over. Uh, the philosophy of this team. Dwayne at the line, Hakeem Warwick checking into the lineup. Number one, a 6 8 freshman out of Philadelphia, Friends Central. You know, he is improved coming late to very much more aggressive around the rim, getting some offensive putbacks. Jimmy told me yesterday at lunch, he said, this young man has a chance to be very, very good. You could tell there was a lot of excitement in his voice when we talked about him. Now, you can hear excitement in Beheim's voice. It's usually you gave him a check. <laughs> Or a good player. And he's got a quick double on him. Lucas back over to Bradley. 
Well, it's going to be good, I think, at that foul and make a decision. There's a nice short corner look. Powell, the left-hander, almost doesn't draw iron, and there's going to be a push inside. And that's on Kitchens, I believe. Yeah, the big fella, that little tavern league discard. A little smile, too, thought he got away with it. Kitchens for the last five games, a double-double. Injured a knee during the season, had to sit, and he gained a lot of weight, and it did not help him. And his head coach ran him a lot trying to get him back in shape. As I said, since his resurgence, the Gamecocks have searched for it as well. South Carolina, three turnovers, two points, one of seven from the field. And the thing is, they're not getting good looks, Bill. Not at all. It's the zones of the dilemma. This is Chumper now kept back and got himself a good look, but it also helps you rebound when you get good looks. Good cut. In and out. And at that hoop, a lot of basketballs have uh, gone around the edge and would not stay down. Well, Craig Forrest, one of those guys is going to get better and better. Does some good things here. Gets away with a little deflection. Fourth, uh, Bill mentioned, probably uh, getting away with a little reach in. Nice uh, help anyway, back over the field. He's got, this, he's got the size now. He gets himself into position to deliver. Knock it down. Well, guys salivate when they get that kind of a situation. And even with the body of Aaron Lucas, unable to body him out deep enough and take away his legs. So Dave Odom calls a timeout, wants to talk it over with his team. 9-2, they trail. And, Ron, earlier they had posted up a Lucas, and this time he gets him out the perimeter because uh, the use of screens by Shumpert. And what a difference. I mean, when he had that vision difficulty, they just sort of went downhill, never got the confidence level. Well, Thursday night, 7 o'clock Eastern, Suzuki presents ESPN The Magazine's College Basketball Award. 15 awards will be presented, including the Men's and Women's Player of the Year by position, an overall Men's and Women's Player of the Year, Men's and Women's Coach of the Year, and the B Foundation Comeback of the Year Award. Well, for the V Foundation Award, Bradley of uh, South Carolina, Janelle, a senior out of Beckley, West Virginia, and well-documented his story at the 18 months of age, lost 80% of his hearing. We'll talk more about that as the game goes on. But he is truly an inspirational young man and a huge favorite Great story. of Gamecock. Fans. I heard you tell the other, it all started with a fever, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm six fever, went on for three days. They must have his outside shooting tonight also if they're going to be in this group. And they're going to get offensive rebound. That's a position there. Kitchen's had it. Didn't squeeze it. And the loose tightens because you lack confidence on the offense. That pull up here like this. We can get anybody involved. Syracuse comes away with it. Bill, let me ask you this question. Syracuse plays in this arena on a regular basis. Does that give them a little bit of a homey advantage? I think more so than Carolina. I think it's an advantage in the comfort zone. Although South Carolina seems very relaxed. It's just that the zone is their dilemma. And they played a Big East tournament. Here's a turnover. And a good aggressive D you alluded to earlier by South Carolina. So Deshaun Williams comes back into the lineup. And number 15, Theus goes to the bench. And not as an afterthought, Chris, they were here early in the year in the preseason, and I think they won it. Well, in fact, yeah, if they were to win this whole thing, it'd be the first in the history of this tournament to win pre and post. Mm -hmm. A long way to go in this, particularly with South Carolina. This is, great. this is where I think he can do the damage, because when he gets it in there, now he's creative. It's him with the ability to either finish, put it on the floor, or find people. A little more of that's going to help them run. So we'll take a timeout. 11.50 left until halftime. Syracuse by seven. Mackey and Antonio Grant, they play for the North Charleston Logators. And their coach, by the way, is Alex English, also who played for South Carolina. Guys, give your former school some tips. What have they got to do to get back in this one? I think uh, you know, both of you guys watched, as we did with Glee, the uniform difficulty. What would happen in your league if you left your visiting uniforms uh, at home? Well, we wouldn't be switching uniforms. We have to go white on white. But if, if they were talking about getting a security escort, all, we have to go six hours on the bus all the way back home to get our uniform. <laughs> <laughs> How has it been going for you instructionally? Have you, have you learned a lot from... Alex and the people you're playing against? Yeah, we've learned a good bit, and that's what it's all about, developing to try to get to the next level. 
and everybody in the organization and players on the court included. And uh, it's been a real good experience. You know, it has its ups and downs, just like any anything would in this first year. But as it keeps going and going, I know a lot of people will, will get into it because it's a good basketball. It's It's got to make you guys appreciate some of the really nice frills that the NBA gets and even some of the colleges for that matter. Oh, no doubt about it. I, I'll go back to college in a minute. Any <laughs> day, huh? Hey, you guys stick around. I'll talk to you some more as the game goes out, okay? Appreciate it. Shumpert buries that three, and just before that, Bradley with the three, but Bradley also picked up his second it's personal very foul. Uh, it, absolutely. He's uh, still on the floor. Got to use him if he's on the floor. Nice slip pass. Again, the inability to make the first, but the counter, that's what they need. Some inside baskets, just like the guy said. Orlando Howell in the right spot. Orlando, a sophomore out of right there in Columbia, South Carolina. And by the way, Bill, a lot of people say that Orlando was the greatest or the highest recruited uh, player since uh, Alex English uh, at uh, South Carolina out of Columbia. Uh, they've had some great ones because there's some great ones out in New York too. A little too deep by the Cuse and nice kitchen. Sprinting back down the floor. He wouldn't tell me exactly how much he got that weight up to. They listed as 260, but I know it got between 280 and 290, but his head coach helped get some of that off of him, and that's one of the things that has helped him. Nice open look, and you mentioned Williams struggling earlier, but I think Kitchens with the difficulty ahead when he had the concussion, those things set him back, put some weight on. And, you know, now he's a guy in the SEC tournament. They said, we're going to go to you. We're going to see what you can do. And right here inside, they're just like a Jeremy McNeil. And here's where Jamel is at such a disadvantage. 6'2", he only weighs 170. Slight at this time of year, maybe even less than that, Bill. Well, he can shoot the ball so well, though. I mean, that makes up for a lot of shortcomings. And squaring off of guys like Jeremy McNeil at 260. Stay out of there. No, you're right. That's a mismatch. Get out the perimeter. Under 10 minutes to play in his opening half in our first semifinal game of the night. Memphis with a final pretty shot. Nice. That's a big time play. Uh, BJ Mackey was suggesting they go to the rim. A great proof there. Good illustration of unselfish play. Syracuse lead to cut to four. Uh, Memphis got the runner, went in front by two, and uh, Temple had three opportunities in the last five seconds. Couldn't get them to go. Shumpert inside, and that's going to be blocked and a foul against Tony Kitchen. Well, that's knowing your area. Shumpert was really dead under there as Kitchen gets two. That's a major dilemma uh, for Dave Odom, but searching out the body uh, just to get to the free throw line, line with Shumpert. You know, not to make excuses for Coach Beheim and his staff, but you have to be uh, very honest about the fact you mentioned the vision problems when he, uh, he got the eye infection after having had a scratch. And Bill, when he's gone, he's out for seven games. They lose six of those seven games. Well, you know, it's tough to rearrange things on the run, and that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Back to that little lane violation with Jim Syracuse. McNeil stepped yeah. in, so he won't get the second one. Jim did admit yesterday at lunch, I said, you know, your dependency on him, and he said, I think if I have to be totally honest, we depended on him too much. Uh, you know, it's a, again, in case you, you see a guy playing well, why not go to him so you can condense yourself and right there deal with the lane violation and Billy Selleck the Selleck are right on the floor and Billy gives him some size he's a terrific screener really should help Shumpert a little Lucas way outside Selleck 7 feet only weighs 213 that's hard to believe Syracuse leading by a couple following that long jumper by Lucas. And here's a little bit of a matchup now. Selick gets the ball inside and goes up, but it gets a chance to go to the free throw. Why are you picking on thin fellas? I mean, later on in life, he'll appreciate it. But right now, uh, when you mix it up, really, Selick not as strong and as physical, but this is just a terrific bounce pass. And wisely going up, he hits it. That's I mean, two on him. Yeah, I mean, their major domos are having their problems. And 16 fouls against South Carolina. Quickly, Dave Odom walks over to the bench and tells Patratishes to get off his warm-up jersey and uh, come into the lineup. But actually, well, they're going to bring Kitchings to the bench. And yeah, probably thinking it's in may be able to play without getting that foul. Now, some guys are better at it than others. Generally, the perimeter people. Now, Sinek is a 50% free throw shooter. 
much interesting you say, Jim. His dad must have been a heck of a coach. And he really understands the game. There he is in the right there in the middle. Spot. A little too short on that one. Numbers. Away by Theus, and they do have numbers. You're right. That's a four on two break. They put up with the jumper. Can't get it to go inside. Or it really more, quick yeah. to the ball. Jumper. That's an air ball, and boy, Rolando Howe got whacked right in the face. Deshaun there with the reach in on the scrape. Williams. So we'll take a break. 17-14 uh, Syracuse. 7.58 left in this first half. Syracuse by three and a reminder ESPN's original entertainment down low life in the D-League. The next episode on ESPN tonight 12.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Hope you got to hear some of our visit with B.J. Mackey and Antonio Grant just a bit ago and in fact as the ball game goes on probably in the second half we'll be able to visit with those uh, young gentlemen again but an interesting experience that people don't realize uh, as a comment in a moment ago it makes you appreciate more life that you had in college and also what you see that the NBA provides well, as far as luxuries. And you find out how much you like the game. I yeah. mean, that's very important. You find out if you like the game, Bill. And I want to find out from DJ about Christmas dinner. I think Mom oh, did a yeah. nice job for Mom the team. entertained and uh, cooked for the entire team. And that's why it's so important to get an education. Nice little slip pass again. It's, it's so tough in there. You get a good education and get a chance to find out if you like the game. And you've got both covered. Nice move by, by Dave Odom. So he takes it to the, from the point, puts him in the middle, but still he's dishing the ball off, and they get the easy two right there. He's got a really good feel, a tough look by Seelick. You put a ball over your head, everybody in the place knows. They gamble pass. Good take away by Howell. About to go under seven minutes left in this first half. Because of really tough defense by both teams, not as fast moving or as fast paced and scoring as the first game that we had in the Simmons tonight. Lucas in and out and lucky and that one and again Warren. Boy can he sky. He can soar. No and wonder Jim got so excited at lunch when I asked about him yesterday. You know, he actually looks taller than the beginning of the year to me. Now maybe he's just jumpy taller. What's the, it's the combination uniform. That's orange right. on white. It's it's you've more, never huh? seen him like that. See. <laughs> It, it elongates the body. It may. I mean, they got some thin reeds out there at this point. <laughs> Good kick. Somebody back over to the corner and uh, Billy Seelick in the right spot. Yeah. I mean, Billy is not a guy that's going to ring the bell for big numbers, but he does understand his role. He's got a lot of minutes because of McNeil as the backup to Ford. And not a good one here. And Jimmy Beheim not real happy over there. You think this is an important? I mean, anybody who knocks this has had a chance to coach and know what it means to your players. Once you get over the shock of not getting into the NCAA, you get the feet under you, you get back, you're not putting the balls away, and you really build. How often have we seen teams leave this and be better the next year and get into the NCAA? He's only got one senior, so, I mean, hey. I mean, well, see, look, is, is a grad school, but but still he's not a regular. Uh, the only guy that uh, that is going to go away. Right. And we talk about this every year, and I asked him, he said, hey, three extra weeks of practice, five five more ball games. He said, trust me, kids don't like practice. They like to play games. They, they like to play against other people. And it's going to wrap around. How pretty. Oh, it's done. You know what? As Travis just was about to put it down, but that's so creative by Itzit. Chuck on the money with a wrap around. Travis just, that's the fifth turnover now against uh, Dave Odom's club. He makes passes you expect little guys to make. You can see why his coach said that he moved him over to point because things happen better and more efficiently. There's a little trap, something they haven't used. Nice screen down there in the corner, and Dwayne nails it. He's a 34% three-point shooter. Trashes. Nice dish to Lucas, and they want to jump ball, but the official underneath says it's going to be Cedar who picks up the foul. And nice, his second. Nice look at the open floor again. And the ability to see people. Travis just ends it up after the pass from the top. And here the little giveaway, and Seelick picks up another one. Looking for the jump ball. Billy is never much of a referee, by the way. <laughs> well, Luke decided to uh, to bang that one in. By the way, if you're just joining us, and you're saying, what is going on with the uniforms? Syracuse came out in all white tonight, and they were to have been the visiting team at, at halftime. I assume 
they will uh, put on the road pants as well. They need another escort for those. <laughs> Good distribution and kick. Wedding kicks it back out in the corner. Shepard trying to pick up a three-shot violation. The home folks wanted that to happen, and it's going to be a frustration foul on Shepard. Well, he felt he got hit. I'm sure he did get nicked. They had a play on, and uh, as and you noted, so frequently when things don't go your way, even if you've been around for a while, yeah. you give it away. You know, you look at his numbers out of Fort Walton Beach, Florida, 20, or just over 20 points a game, 6.1 rebounds a game, 81% for the free throw line, and almost 40% from beyond the arc. Uh, just a solid all-around performer. He went down and didn't play well. This was entirely a different team because his cutting and the ability of teams to try and take him out of stuff set other guys up. That was missed. Travis is a 73% free throw shooter. Gets that one to go down as well. And it is a two-point ball game. And you got to remember, uh, South Carolina only scored two points in the first eight minutes and 20 seconds of this game. Uh, Syracuse should have made a substantial run at that time. And that hurt them. So it's a great deal for Coach Odom and his staff and the adjustments that they have made about the defense of the Cues. In and out, won't go. Tipped by South Carolina back out to Lucas. Again, they want to really push the tempo. Not necessarily the quick jack and point with use of the floor. Good kick, a local product, and a Bishop Lachlan. One of those lefties, the five that you mentioned. The Travis just, they double on him, and this is where the youngster gets in trouble. But he gets it away to Lucas for the free two. And Billy Salick, Gamble, Selick, and paid for it. Nine points for Lucas. Tie ball game at 22 as we hit the four and a half minute mark. And now the locals from Columbia, South Carolina, up in Cherry Near Ball Club. Well, the years they've had a lot of locals, huh? A little trip here. Mentioned John Roche earlier, Mike Dunleavy, Kevin Joyce, Brian Withers. Not too bad, huh? And of course, Bobby Kremen's one of those fellows, too, the former Georgia Tech coach. Perfect trap situation. The gamble occurs, and you pay for it if you don't come up with it. Now, the last line of defense was the center. Michael Boynton in the ball game is pleased to shoot the free throw. And the lefty is off the mark, and that one is rebounded by the game clock. Boynton, a youngster out of Brooklyn, New York. And uh, I know he visited with you today, and I'm sure got a lot of tickets out in this one. He said 30. He did it. <laughs> Everybody calls once you get to Madison Square Garden, but a big smile to be back home. Coach is trying to steal the clock and some of the foul problems. Not a good entry there. Good anticipation by Theus. Boynton with a turnover. Schumper gets his man in the air, then takes the three, and it's going to be Boynton who fouled him. Now, is this going to be a two-shot or three-shot, Bill? I think he was just inside the line, wasn't he? All right. Took it for that. Oh, they got three. Yeah, Larry Rose just put up three. So, you know, it's interesting. Jim Beheim had bickered a little bit with the officials on that pump fake earlier and here I think maybe just testing I've been around they should understand and a good non foul too as the defense went by great patience by Shumpert Shumpert now with seven points on the night Memphis won the opening semifinal game by one over Temple and one of these two teams will face off against the Tigers on Thursday evening, 9 o'clock Eastern, right here on ESPN, following the awards show. Boy, the roll of the ball, huh? Not making Double shots break. at the end of the games. 3.50 left until halftime, and the Q's back up by three. Tonight on Robo, Syracuse by three. And a reminder, Friday, ESPN has exclusive coverage of the NCAA Women's Final Four from San Antonio. The evening starts. Robin Roberts hosting the 2002 Women's NCAA Final Four Special at 6.30. Then at 7 o'clock, two number one seeds, OU and Duke. And then at 9 o'clock, a number two seed in Tennessee takes on number one seed, UConn. ESPN, your exclusive home for the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship. They will enjoy San Antonio. I remember the... When the men went there for the first time and the committee said immediately, we're coming back to the city because much akin to Indianapolis, you can walk from the hotel. Right. It's a very convenient. Very hospitable town. Of course, Tennessee, and you can meet for the fourth time in the final four. I think that those coaches know one another pretty well. <laughs> 3.30 left until the half time. Uh, it's on the outside. Now, if he can penetrate, fine. Well, not too bad there, but generally when it touch by check it's in good things happen 
foul, normally a spark plug uh, off the mark and that's a short jumper. Sivak against the Travis and uh, he almost made the alley -oop pass and falling away as Schubert and he knocks it down. Now in double figures with 11. You know what he does very well? You don't think he's going to shoot it. He just turns and hesitates. He's got six, seven. A terrific asset in that particular post up. Following that his teammates, if uh, he had an intruder behind him who was not being covered by one of his teammates. Well, if they tell if Billy, they don't understand what he's saying. <laughs> they get a kick out of him. They, they good coverage. Here's the trap. And he can he hits the foul line and a nice read. Oh, he just finds people, isn't he? The Travis's, and they tripled him that time. And he was out of bounds. He got the foul. Out of bounds. But Shumpert, a guy that he's tough to defend because, like all good scorers, he keeps himself busy. Screen, re-screen, get a screen, and now a little slip to the goal. A little duck in, and now the curl out. And it's just solid. You don't think he's going to shoot. He just freezes a little bit. Carlos didn't get the hand up, and Pal paid for it. Now you can see to Carlos out well. We have uh, we've settled this issue. He's going to bring it back out front and reset. Didn't do it. Deep early, huh? Jumper four left on the shot clock. He's the only one that has the green light like that, though, isn't he? Yeah, Jimmy didn't even move. So no, you're right. Did. You're absolutely right. Oh, nice look in the middle. How? But he stepped. He slipped at first as he tried to make a quick step. You can see him trying to rub a little traction back into his shoe. And that's uh, seven turnovers against the game time. And a good close by Josh Pace from the top. He hurt that little play as well. Pace goes out, Dwayne goes out. And Deshaun Williams will check back into the lineup. Also, number one, Hakeem Warwick. The only thing that Hakeem has not really changed that his head coach wants changing, that's in the free throw line. That uh, comes up a little short. Boynton comes up with a rebound and a foul by James Theus. Or, or Warwick, either one, you're right. They just pinched on him. Uh, the hustle there and the right spot. You need your guards to rebound. They did call it on uh, Hakeem Warwick. Coming up uh, on Sports Center in game at halftime, Bill Beetle and Tim McCormick. They'll bring you Memphis Temple and uh, that barn burner. McCormick on the, the final four and the Major League Baseball owners, no lockout. Center in the game. Coming up the Tim, a heck of a player for something later on in the NBA. And I think for big guys, the Lakers are going to say this, when the zone came, they couldn't get touches. They weren't happy guys. And frequently that will happen against the Cuse. If you're inside, unless you've got somebody as creative as Chuck Itson, you may not get that delivery. You've known Bayheim for a long time, in the almost three decades that he's been up there. How many times has he changed on back and forth from you know, deciding that man was the thing or that zone was what would get it done for him? I think it's been with groups. I mean, he has been able to recognize. Dave Odom said he met, played them years ago when he was an assistant at Virginia, and it was man man. All man. So I mean, he really, the most defensive coaches, and, and Jimmy's got to consider that. Like John Cheney, they teach man to man principles, and then they put you into the zone environment. So, if they're five seen that one, you're not going to have success with the zone if you have to play for great man to man, and you're sort of shocked if you're not used to it. As you can see, but Travis uh, comes back in the ball game. And a two one two look. Pull up and shoot the jumper, and Dwayne knocks it down. Well, that's when you're trying to dodge it. You hope that they take a shot like that. He's got double figures now, Bill. Ten yeah. points. And you hope they don't convert it, but great confidence by Clay. Well, we see exactly what the head coach was talking about. Their defense has been very consistent. And when they shoot well, they are a very competitive sort. Hitson looks inside. There's nothing there. And this is what they've always worried about. The standing still as Lucas tees it up. And boy, do they need that. Blue struggling. Blue knocks down another very long jumper, and he's in double figures with 12. In fact, he is the only game cock with 12. The next one closest to him is uh, Kitchings with five. 
Syracuse with two in double figures. Trumpet with 11 and a 20 with 10. And a whistle and a foul away from the ball. Uh, they pointed at Howell. And Selig is just, he's just holding his chest there as though he got uh, nicked. You know, Lucas making that shot, I'm thinking with B.J. Mackey as well. They've always had good guards at South Carolina. The guys that can fill it up, can find the lane, can find people. And strong, too, so they can guard, take some hits. Well, he came back over to signal that uh, Howell, 55, the man with the foul, B.J. Mackey and Antonio Grant. In the second half, we're going to visit with them a little bit more about this ball game as South Carolina has clawed their way back in. And, and man, I love the name, the North Charleston Low Gators. Yeah. Not the High Gators or Alligators. And uh, we're going to pick their brain a little bit later on uh, the type of travel and the demands. And yet, uh, you know, nobody is uh, giving you a little pat in the back and giving you a lot of love. You just got to get ready by yourself and learn the game. Well, Shittuck showing why he is uh, a 50% free throw shooter. 30 now, seconds left until halftime. And Ron, he stole minutes for them with the big guys with some foul problems. That is a great point, right? A great point, because they have continued to uh, to go in a positive direction since he came in. Lucas looks up at the clock. Always the concern on a tip at the end. You want to get a good look, not too early. He's hitting an offensive board. What a play by Shepard. Thought he had one. Look at this. They don't throw it away. Ipsen saves it. They have time to get a shot off. No. So we head to the locker room in this second semifinal game, which is really turned into uniform gate. And now the officials say, wait a minute. Point seven. That was a shot clock violation, Bill. Okay, so, so it's not halftime. Yeah, that's right. I thought for a minute Sergius went back to the locker room and changed the uniforms. <laughs> Joel has hold it for seven tenths of a second. Shot clock violation, and it means that the Syracuse will inbound the ball. I guess the nearest point is where they're in. Let's see, uh, Jim Behunt now wants the timeout. He asked Bernie Fine for the clipboard. He's been asking him that for a quarter of a century. And check this, the shot clock out, as it'll show you. A little extra time. What a hustle play here by Itzen, too. I didn't think he was going to get there. All right, there it goes to zero. And actually, that shows 0.5 seconds. Well, it didn't hit anything, uh, so he got rid of it, you might say. But uh, will they give them the seven? Yeah, sure looks like it. That's what the game clock is showing now, though. Now, I know Jimmy's pretty good, but uh, I don't see Grant Hill or Christian Leitner out there. <laughs> but they're not going the length of the floor. And this is one you hope you don't offensive foul. Encounter that. This is some sort of a back screen or a quick cut to the point, and you can turn and shoot it in six tenths of a second. Schumbert puts it up for grabs, and the promises is there to intercept it for South Carolina. So, officially, we are at halftime, and our scores they head to the locker room is Syracuse 29 to 26 of a South Carolina. Right now, let's join Bill Pito and Tim McCormick for the Sports Center in-game halftime report, gentlemen. All right, Ron. ESPN's presentation of the Owens Corning NIT postseason tournament is brought to you by Marriott. Wherever business takes you, your Marriott awaits. Well, I know security is tough, but a strip search is ridiculous. In case you missed what happened off the top of the telecast, both teams came here in white. Well, Syracuse should have been the visiting team, which meant they should have brought their orange uniforms. They came in white. Uh, they had to send a police escort with the manager back to the hotel, and now, voila, look at this, a complete ensemble, all in orange, for the Syracuse Orangemen here tonight, and officials, and guys like my partner here who have uh, seen a lot of basketball in their time, I've never seen it, you said you've never seen a situation I, like that. I've this. never seen it, but you know what, Jim Beheim's been around a long time, and he made the big decision, you know what it was? What? They brought the uniforms out, and he said, no pants. They went with the split look. 
But you know what? It would take too long. Are there going to be some people editing this game this week say, wait a minute, you gave me two different games. That one's going to be orange and white, and the other's going to be all orange. So let's talk uh, Schumpert. Well, outstanding first half, and he, he came and did what he normally does best. Well, he's good without the basketball, and South Carolina does what they do best. Play defense, try to be physical, bang him around, uh, give him a little hit here and there, but his offense, when he is on his game, gets good looks because he's good with the basketball size-wise. If you play a guard on him, he can elevate knock shots down. So if Syracuse is to prevail, he's got to keep himself active. Quickly, here are the stats. Syracuse, you see he and Dwayne both with uh, their totals. Rest of the team, three of nine. And for South Carolina, two points the first eight and a half minutes of the ball game. So quite frankly, it is amazing that the Odom Ball Club is within three right now. And it's a tribute to him. I mean, they started to push tempo, not necessarily get breaks or layups, uh, but some quick action. And here's a early foul. A little nickel dimer as Orlando Howell gets caught up in one of those little plays you say, why? Number two. Now, actually, he was trying to guard, but he also was trying to get away from him. And that's the reason he looked on in amazement, but it's his second. The inside, the court took his hand off the ball. That's twice tonight that if he watches the ball in, he's in a good position to take so it right up. Catch it with your eyes. Oh, Al Balbo used to say, God bless him, former assistant for Lucana Seca. Watch it come right into those paws. And look at this lob to the rim. How unlucky and kitchings is right there to follow it. A good physical play, too. Very imposing inside. So this is as many points as South Carolina scored the first eight and a half of that first half. Let's see if they can continue their offensive uh, track here. Fourth tips it away, and it's going to be taken by Ibsen. Off on the wing, Bradley has it stolen. And a no call, you're right. They let a play on. I tell you, Dwayne made a great play defensively to get back and made Ibsen throw the ball prematurely, and that led to that little jumper basket. Amphius right there with the great anticipation took the ball away. Back to a three-point game, and Bradley has been quiet since early on in the first half. They're going to have it. They force him deep, but this is really a long jumper under duress. That's pretty tough three-point delivery. Played the first minute and a half of this second half. Nice Memphis score. is already there. Winner of this one will take on Memphis for the NIT championship on Thursday. Too short on that one, and here comes South Carolina. Now they ought to use the inside people. I think they have become more forceful. Uh, it's a thin front line. That's it. Can win, try and get something attacking. Lucas back out. Bradley, this is for three. Got it. And that's all because of penetration inside out. Put the ball down. Get a pinch. Get it. Comes over and taps his teammate Lucas on the backside and says, thanks. Good look there. And we are tied at 31. Just going to screen down and get Shepard free. South Carolina's only led this ball game one time. A two to nothing. Dwayne gets by Howell, and Howell just picked up his third. A small change didn't move the feet. And that's the quickness at the forward spot that Syracuse takes advantage of with Shumpert. Now the ability to find people after you do the penetration, the kick, and Bradley knocks it down. Well, some technical difficulties there. Meanwhile, Hughes got the hoop. Bradley into the corner to Lucas. 34-31, and the look inside, and Kitchings back out on the wing, and they do a nice job of covering up Lucas. Bradley is open, can't get this one. Howell with a nice job of the rebound, and he hits the follow. Boy, fully extended. A couple of real nice trips. They've gotten good looks the last couple of times against the zone. I'm sure Dave Odom now feeling a little more comfortable. It was a struggle in that first half run. What really was, and in fact, the change that they made was taking Dixon away from the point and moving him inside and letting Bradley and Lucas get the ball to him and let him either shoot or distribute. They could use Ford to do some turn around and be aggressive, maybe not from the top, but in the box area. He's got a little bit of a game, but just playing within the system. Deshaun Williams 
is trying so hard, but he just he's having trouble getting it all come together. And he is a talent too. So you, you know, one thing about him though, he can light it up. Even if he's had a struggle, he'll seize the opportunity. He kind of again. Forsman not watching the ball in. Three individual turnovers on him. Certainly good hands too, Ryan. Now thrown into traffic. Howell couldn't get it. Williams at the other end. Pulls up at the free throw line, and there it is. And he's got the least bit of ash. We'll take it. Nice pull up. Great control. Nice flashing by South Carolina. It's really gotten some ample opportunities on kickouts. Nice denial. Well, they try to go in the middle again. This Good time they're catching. And at the other end, Theus couldn't get it to go. Numbers for South Carolina and the lob, and how couldn't control it, and right there is Lucas to follow it up. They had enough numbers down there. And so he's not able to get back. And what hustle. Bradley ended up with it, but Lucas contesting the layup. They got the ensuing run out. Luke now with 14 points. Wendy Howell has to leave him alone. You see, it was total matador. Had to hop out of the way. He's got three. And if Syracuse is smart, which they were there, I think they'll continue to go inside on him. Here he comes, kind of defense. All he had to do was take away the baseline, though. And presented troubles for others as Dwayne wisely using the bounce. We'll follow in our uh, game, Sports Center with Stuart Scott and uh, Steve Levy. Kansas, Maryland breakdown, Indiana Hoops, Knight and Davis. Major League's uh, Diamonds in the rough. Uh, Dwayne on that free throw line, a little connection with Jared Jeffries. They're buddies uh, back in the Bloomington area, so they're both busy at this time of year. Sort of a player's delight. 37 to 35, Syracuse by a couple as we're about to hit the 15 minute mark. Bradley looks over that 2-3 uh, defense. The bouncer inside and they get what they wanted with catchings and he was fouled. How nice is that? And that's number three, I believe, if they give it the fourth, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, number three. Number three on him. And the ability to just break the zone away because the big guy steps up thinking he's got a guard it's it right here now. Here's the step up, and he bears the back. I mean, that's great execution. And if you notice today, they did a lot of just three people on the floor, Ron, in practice. The big guys just to see how they could cope with inside passing. South Carolina, that is. Katrin's trying to get his ninth point, and he misses on that one. When he gets the carom. Here. A nice step to the ball. Dwayne along the baseline. Powell, I think, has just picked up the foul. It's a nice job offensively, though. Cliff Dwayne just drawing the D, a little suckage. And then the blow by he never got the proper angle to pick up uh, the charge. You just see Kitchen's face is up and now gets the high angle and just can't recover. You can see inside trying to pick up the charge on the baseline there. Carlos Powell. Powell with the second foul. And the fourth team foul on South Carolina. Only one of Syracuse here in the second half. I'm going to put a problem for both clubs. He's in the middle. Passing. Fouls miss. Catchings down on the floor and Kitchings, it'll be a jump ball. And the possession error says it'll stay with South Carolina. Got a hustle for the big guy and there's a whistle and we're scheduled for a timeout. 14-24 remaining. One point Q's lead. Unscripted with Chris Connolly at 5 p.m. weekdays on ESPN. 7 to 36. Uh, ESPN's original entertainment download, Life in the D-League. Next episode uh, tonight, 12.30 a.m. And uh, B.J. Mackey's uh, mom, Beverly, made Christmas Eve dinner for B.J. and his NBDL team, the North Charleston Logators. And you can get behind-the-scenes look like this for the Logators team on uh, that Life in the D-League.
as we said the next episode is at 12 30 tonight and bj and antonio grant both who uh, played with south carolina here with us tonight gentlemen we visited in the first half some nice adjustments for the gamecocks don't you think yeah there's some good adjustments they made they they put chuck at, at the four the three four slot and left aaron and jamel Lynn, and that that caused them to get some open shots some wide open looks chuck Chuck's doing a good job of getting a lot of people open, getting everybody involved, and getting himself all off. Was that the last good meal you guys had, by the way, that Christmas meal? <laughs> it was good. It was good. <laughs> my, my mom and some of my aunts and grandmother prepared a, some dishes for us, and uh, we, we had a lot. We, we had some left over for a couple of days, but it, a lot was eaten as well. Let me ask you guys one final question. You, you've played basketball all your life junior high high school and in college do you feel like you're learning more basketball now than you have ever learned in a short period of time well yes i, I do because uh now i'm on the professional level and it's a lot more games than it was in college and then the competition level is a lot higher as well a little Shout violation out. here hey guys uh, what would you do against this two three syracuse zone by the way i penetrate and draw fouls <laughs> oh, sure, the guards, yeah. And you, would, you wouldn't kick it either, BJ. <laughs> You'd finish it. Hey, but, listen, are you enjoying learning? And uh, Ron asked that. Uh, is it learning on the run as well, though? A lot of games. Oh, I've been doing this for three years, and, yeah, you, you learn a whole lot of things every year. A lot of games. You have to really take care of your body. It, it's, it's physically and mentally draining, especially at this time. We're in the playoffs, and I just remind everybody to watch, watch, watch the games on Friday. This coming Friday, Greenville plays Columbus, and we play on April 3rd. So it's good basketball. Everybody needs to, needs to keep watching. Okay, BJ, Antonio, thank you guys so much for coming in. Thank good you. luck to you as this year goes on. And I know that we're going to continue to enjoy life in the D-League. Good right. luck to you. Thanks thank a lot, you. guys. Thank you. Syracuse still with a one-point lead, and we're about to go into 13 minutes to play in this ballgame. And they got offense here. Nice step in. Uh, we mentioned the early kitchens had looked to pick it up, but that's great preparation. Number two on Shepard, uh, Jimmy Van Vick, you've got to hit him harder to knock that guy down. Well, one of the things that Shepard has really had very few problems with in his career, and that is multiple fouls during the ball game. Are you, so suggesting, are you suggesting he doesn't guard? <laughs> no, no, I don't. Well, they think the zone does protect him, though, right? It does, yeah. Well, 55, Howell checks in. Kitchings goes to the bench for a breather. And again, uh, you got to look. This little guy right there has got to get into the fray with some points. Powell, the left-hander, had the open look, couldn't get it. Bradley says, give it back to me. Let me put up a three, and they quickly come on him. Wendy, nice job. And they have plenty of time to. Nice heads-up play. Make the zone work. That's the big thing. A lot of ways of uh, attacking with the bounce or the short corner or right in here, which they've had a lot of success in steps, unfortunately. Trying to do too much on the catch instead of giving it up. Carlos Powell. 12 turnovers, South Carolina. What a pass. Got it. <laughs> on the foul, the initial shot, not there. Tell you, what a great catch and use of the pivot with the step to the 10. 18 for him, he averages 20.4 per outing. Powell, fouled, oh. and he's going to go to the line for three. And Dwayne saying, yep. oh my goodness, I didn't do it. And Jimmy Beheim asking why. Oh. Puts them right back in it. I mean, that's just uh, not paying attention to details. Interesting as far as Syracuse is concerned this year. They beat Notre Dame twice and beat Wake Forest and beat Michigan State. As Powell gets the first one to go down. Well, the red light almost went on on that, huh? <laughs> Bounced around a little bit, a little pinball. And he's got one more opportunity. So for all the good defense that Syracuse has played, this right here, clock stopped and, well, he missed the third one. And Dwayne gets the rebound. So it's a one-point game. And Ron, you mentioned Syracuse. I mean, they had a great start of the year, and they just flattened out. And lately, a lot better. Here's a turnover. Oh, my goodness, the break. Now Lucas. Dave Odom is up, and he's saying, wait a minute. The fellow in orange touched it last. 
Beheim is up, and he's questioning that last call down at the far end. So let's take a timeout. Syracuse by one. Right back. To create the ultimate performance products, we use state-of-the-art testing equipment. We test their effect on lean muscle mass and strength, on endurance and body fat, and on how fast the muscles recuperate. How well do they work? Once more. You be the judge. EASHP, scientifically engineered to help you take it to the next level. Well, Ron Franklin, the ability to get the pivot foot established against the back of the zone. You see that right foot now? Now, once he catches it, he's ready to go with the left to the rim. And unfortunately, the initial one by Shumpert is missed, but quicker to the goal against the smaller defender. And that's just great use of the back of the zone. A little short corner action and understanding how to make up distance by establishing a pivot foot. So it's a one-point ball game with 11.41 left to play. Memphis is in the championship game, and they got their winning hoop with uh, just inside of 10 seconds showing on the clock. Temple came down, had a shot, and two putbacks, an opportunity to win, and they couldn't get it done. Fourth misses his shot. Kitchings on the rebound. Gibson and Bradley both have been silenced in the second half. Well, the zone really tags him outside, but that should open up inside things for Gibson to make decisions and passes like this. There's the trap. Good step through. Big time. Powell couldn't get it. Tried to get his own follow and battles. He gets his own rebound. Gibson now left alone, and the lefty's too hard off the back iron. Okay, that's great effort on the glass, though. Powell with great hustle inside, and then Gibson got the good look, and they're getting so few of them that... He rushed the shot a bit, and he gets the foul with this in. Yeah, you're right. You, you're, sort, you're sort of shocked that you get that opportunity. And he's so important. He's got three personal fouls. That's the, the kind you'd like him to get. Uh, just play within yourself. Move the legs. Hope you get a pinch. You know, when you're in the zone, you're going to get some assistance, too. As long as he could have just backed off. Winning. Powell came out and picked him up. Ten and a half minutes left, and Lucas takes it away in the quick first step, and he misses the layup. Wow. Boy, what a hustle play by Shumpert. He had turned it over, made up for it. Blaney with a hand in the face by Kitchings, and he still cans it. That's a tough little angle and that shortness of that shot. A lot of guys short arm it. 15 points for him now. Shumpert with 18, Blaney with 15. And really nobody else. Williams has five. Three for Sealy. And fourth with a couple. It's an in and out trying to be in a proper spot to make a look. They kick it back out to Bradley. Oh. Yeah. Boy, that really helps them. And they have been struggling to get all even. Good job kicking it back out. So nine points now for Jamel Bradley. High low speed away, almost a triangle look. Looks going to be too short. It comes down with the rebound. Trying to put South Carolina on top. They led at two to nothing. Bradley for three. There it is. Boy, they find it, don't they? Against UNLV, he had three in a row in the second half to come to life and really got them on the spurt that they needed. And he lit that building up when he did it as well. They got excited and right now smiles for the first time. Making deep shots. You mentioned the guards have been snuffed out. Uh, but now inside out and a little nylon from deep. So it's 46-43, South Carolina. And look at it one more time. The youngster who lost 80% of his hearing in 18 months can play this game. Pistons and Pacers fight it out for playoff position, literally. And how much longer until Indiana fans consider the Hoosiers Mike Davis' team? Steve Lee, Stuart Scott, Sports Center after the game. 
Well, let's see. Owens Corning NIT semifinals. Memphis won their semifinal game tonight. The winner of this one will face off against the Tigers on Thursday. 46-43. And it is Bradley who has come to life here in uh, the last couple of minutes. We documented a story last week at uh, 18 months of age. Temperature of 106 for three days. Lost 80% of his hearing. And his mom said the tough thing is as a youngster, he had to wear hearing aids. And she found out how cruel kids could be. Oh, I can imagine. He turned to basketball to find more friends. And people said, you can't play. Now he has new and refined hearing aids. And Bill, when the trainer brought him out of the doctor's office and they had put them on him, he heard birds sing for the first time, and he asked him what it was. I you know, heard you say that story. That's amazing. Of course, he can hear a lot of friends now and has a lot of friends in South Carolina. Yes. They love him and for obvious reasons. Schumper nails it. We're tied again at 46. Now he's got 21 points. Now it's interesting that he's out there and not tagged. I mean, you've got to play him. Ron Franklin, Bill Raftery coming to you from Madison Square Garden in New York City. The second semifinal game of the 2002 Owens Corning NIT. And we are tied at 46 with 8.20 left to play, and why not? The first game tonight went right down to the wire with Memphis winning it by one. Inside, Kitchens can't get it to go, misses his follow. Powell battles for it, and Fort takes it away from him. Great fourth. Look at this lob to the rim. Oh, my goodness. Williams with the look and unfortunately were unable to convert. Well, they did not get back. Uh, team on a high flyer. Got fortunate that uh, he was off on his alley-oop because he was airborne he and has been for some time. Pass was just a little awry. Lucas for three. Here they go. These guys are biting them now, aren't they? Getting their comfort and they, they clean within themselves, Ron. Early on, you had mentioned that he didn't get many looks, and now just it's coming to them because they're playing the inside people. Well, it's Lucas who's stepping up now. He's got 17. He only averages 10 of all of them. I say only 10. But when you almost double it in one night, and particularly a big outing like this, extremely important. Now look at that zone backing up. Nice job by Fourth on the screen. In and out. He goes for the tip, and Fourth's going to come away with the basketball. And that's the style of play that he has to perform. He made that best at great point. Something what he does best. Tied again. This time at 49. Under seven minutes to play. Nine o'clock Eastern time on Thursday night, the NIT championship game. Memphis will face off against will it be South Carolina or will it be Syracuse? That middle has to make fourth move. A nice dribble drive. Oh, the runner by Lucas. Lucas is having some kind of night. Sure is. And this team really has gotten to the point their confidence, but their confidence level is so high. And this is the end they've improved here. They're matching up a little bit. The last big game by Lucas was on the road. That was a game up at Virginia. Wow, tough one right there by Hakeem Warwick. And that game up at Virginia, Lucas had 16 points. Five assists and no turnovers. Zero turnovers. Real solid play. Where they are getting the ball where they want. What a great play and no question. Fourth, just level them. That is solid basketball. Good deployment. And then the reaction. Nice high-low dump down. Craig Fourth has just picked up his fourth. Well, what they do is, if you don't come for it here, occasionally, and they will shoot it. But once he stepped up, a little slip behind a solid play to Kitchings. So it means it's uh, Siddick is uh, gonna Siddick about to come off the bench. Fourth will have to come out of the ball game. Billy gave him some solid minutes, as Mr. Raftery noted at halftime. Now Billy's gonna have to contribute on the glass, and he also knows how to play that zone. And also, he's a very good screener. Lucas comes away with the ball after it's tipped up in the air by Howell. And going down and through with the guards, particularly Bradley. And Lucas just side exchanges. Dave Odom looking now, not only to get a good look, but to run some fun. Three-pointer on the way. Got it. Boy, it's in the largest lead. Four points. They led it by two back in the first half. What an addition he is when he shoots the ball well.
the cut of Shumpert, and that's going to be a foul on Kitchen as that's South Carolina, point. it's a proper call because he went way out to get him. Four fouls now on Tony. And Shumpert did a great job just sliding more to the right as Kitchens has done a good job anticipating that dive to the rim. Unfortunately, his lateral motion detected. So why 24 points on it, wouldn't you say? Or 25? Uh, the inability to get there in time has presented the problem for Kitchens. And just his read here, you see him still sliding over? Yeah, he's still sliding yeah. as, uh, as Shumpert got there. So there's a timeout. 524 left in our ball game. South Carolina by a couple. The Toro Super Blower. You can't buy a more powerful handheld blower. Another smart idea from Toro. ESPN's presentation of the Owens Corning NIT postseason tournament is presented by Owens Corning. At Owens Corning, we know home. And in part by Toro. Count on it. South Carolina leading by a pair. Take a look at the brackets one more time in case you have just joined us. The semifinals in the first game of the night, it was Memphis winning by one over Temple. And the winner of this one will square off of the championship game with Memphis, 9 o'clock Eastern on Thursday evening. First game tonight, uh, pretty doggone exciting as Memphis wins at 78-77. As I said, they scored the hoop to go in front with less than 10 seconds. Temple came right back down. They had a look, a very decent look, and two follows and couldn't get any of them to go. I mean, they're dodging those type of situations. A little divine intervention, I think, at the end of that game. <laughs> Fun game, though. And this one sort of reminiscent as they close down. Lucas waiting for his long arms, taking a step out on him. And Williams showing a lot of respect for Bradley after knocking down a couple. Right, you're right, great. Yeah, he's getting right out. Oh, my goodness. Uh, it's a little too deep. Yeah, that is way, way deep. That is a deep NBA shot. Yeah, sometimes you feel you've got it going. You're going to jack one up. And Dave Odom turns and looks at his guys. Ernie Nestor, longtime assistant. And Dave's been in New York, so he knows his way around for a Southern gentleman. As we mentioned, Dave won this tournament as the head coach of Blake Boys a couple of years ago. Shumper just continues to carry the Syracuse team. He's got 28. And that extension, that size he has, pretty little release. Over half the points for the Orangemen tonight. South Carolina much more deliberate on the offensive end. Shot clock down to eight. Lucas puts it on the floor once, now pulls up too hard off the back iron, and it's Dwayne who rebounds. A deliberate but forceful, don't you feel, Ron? Yeah. Like, a nice That's play defensively. Nice play defensively. Now, Bradley, well, that gets it right back. You mentioned that long three. You got to count on being productive, of course. Jimmy got a green with it. It's painful, a little agita, but you can be moving. I mean, that's uh, Nichols, uh, the star of officials, saying you can be moving. It was like his the destination was unknown. He was out of control. Right. And probably the reason the whistle was The shoulder, the head down. Got to have body control. Under four minutes. Left in the second semifinal game. The bouncer inside, and Tony Kitsings forces it up. And he was fouled. He's going to go to the line for a couple. Silic gets the foul. Now they've done His third. Good, they've done as good a job as I've seen getting the ball right in here and getting a good look. Silic getting pushed under. And that's Lucas underneath, by the way. They just tried to jam that. Aaron is so big around the rim for a little guy. Well, a 52% free throw shooter, and he swishes that one. 
it appears as though what the instruction to the big people, particularly in the second half, is when you get the ball, don't pump and fake and give them time to get backside help and sometimes triple. Quick decisions. Quick decision, get it on up there. So we'll take a break. 57-55, South Carolina. Well, we got a tight one, a two-point lead, South Carolina. Let's go back to the first semifinal game of the night. We talked about how tight it was. Look at the clock running down and this great look inside. Wise will score it. Memphis with a one-point lead. Billy, take it from here. Well, the ability to get to the rim is very important in this kind of a situation. And you can see the penetration. Uh, unfortunately, they don't get the great look. Then all of a sudden, Hawkins, I think, gets a great opportunity on the baseline. Here's the step through and a pull-up, but look at the follow. This one barely misses, and Kevin Lyon in great position, and Memphis very fortunate in a hard-fought game. Against some sticky defense, I don't think uh, John Cheney would have any complaints that his club had an opportunity, and a reminder, Sports Center coming up next, immediately following this one. They've got a lot of mileage out of this zone. Uh, Shepard's been able to do some things, even jump shots or driving down the lane. He's down and through. Both teams with 16 fouls. Shot clock is at 9. Wayne back out to Shepard. They can elevate. And they leave Wayne all alone, and it's too short. Off the front iron. And say, even now, South Carolina pushing it, even if they don't take anything, just to be more forceful. They get a great look. Rolando Howe, the sophomore out of Columbia, South Carolina. That's just solid basketball. That's the philosophy that they talked about, the rush. Make sure you don't get lethargic. Williams pulls up. Nice dish. And say goodbye to that one as the key warrant is about three feet over the rim as he slammed it home. Send it in, McCullough. <laughs> oh, is that pretty. The penetration set it up. Two and a half minutes left. Two-point ball game. South Carolina leads it. Inside, nice look and forth. Allowed pitching. No way. Came, came the high side. Should have dipped baseline. Not a good play defensively. Nice screen by him, though. Oh, nice look. The fourth will score. How about that for court awareness? I mean, he is a promising player. A long career ahead of him. Again, it's a two-point game, and this time at the two-minute mark. And there he does the right job. He stepped in front of the center for it. Gibson, back over to Lucas. Shot clock is at 10. Now they've got to set something in motion. It's with the spin move. This is it all. Howell scores. How creative by Itson. Howell just spaced out. Solid play. And a timeout called by Syracuse. Rolando Howell. Had 25 points against Mississippi State in conference play. Had 16 rebounds against Arkansas, showing just how valuable he can be getting it done at both ends. Well, he's been able to do those numbers because guys like Chuck Hitchin with the spin dribble draws two. A nice little location to find and a little nylon. Real solid play. They've been consistent in getting it inside and distributing. And Hal has a good habit. He doesn't bring the ball down. He keeps it at its optimum height and then shoot.
Texas and Maryland. They prepare for one of the two national semifinals down in Atlanta. Indiana Hoops, Knight and Davis. Major League Baseball, Diamonds in the Rough. Adam and more in Sports Center coming up in about 37.3 seconds from now or thereabouts. Memphis is already there. They won by one over Temple tonight in the first semifinal game. Is it going to be South Carolina or is it going to be Syracuse? Ideally, now you'd like a five-second violation if you're Syracuse. And conversely, people have to cut precise screens and make yourself available if you're South Carolina. I would throw it out. I would not throw it in the corners. Because of the trap, what you talked about. Well, they nice. had to set play, and Bradley gets it inside, and he's fouled by Diaz. Well, that's when you've got an alert backcourt guy. Sees the opportunity. Nice dive to the rim. Bail the inbounder out. It's a... And very quickly, Jamel Bradley goes over and gets the towel from the bench. The guy that you least wanted to foul on the floor for South Carolina right now. And that's why Dave Odom attempted to get him the basketball. He's been around four years. There you go. Charlie Mack Alexander, who does the play-by-play -play for South Carolina uh, Gamecock basketball on radio, nicknamed him West Virginia Long Rifle because of those long threes that uh, that he uh -huh. took, and it, it really stuck with him. In and out right there, couldn't get it to go. But a six-point ball game with 30 seconds left. And Jeff, you don't want to foul, but be aggressive. Rainey off the mark, and a rebound by Howell. Those two big guys, Howell and Kitchings, have come up with some huge boards in the last two minutes of this ball game. Uh, they have been tough, I think, all evening, but you're right, more so down the stretch. Some extremely important boards that Syracuse had people there, and just a little quicker to get to the basketball. And also physical, too. I think that's one area of concern from Jim Beheim during this year. His uh, forwards are slight, and therefore have some problems with this big fourth being a freshman and learning how to play. Uh, some of those concerns exhibit themselves on the glass. Well, for Rolando Howell tonight, we talk about him doing it at both ends, 10 points, 10 rebounds. So Dave Odom trying to accomplish a couple of things, keeping Syracuse from becoming the first team to win the pre- and post-game NIT, and also to win his second NIT title in two years at two different schools. And Jim Beheim with uh, you know, a team that early in the year everyone thought was phenomenal. I remember talking to him, he said, you know, we've got a long way to go even though we're winning. And I've got again. Terrific year up there at the Cuse. 23 and 12 now, he's going to play the consolation. But Dave Odom, they were ready, they handled the zone, and they competed on the glass. So a classy thing to do by Beheim. It just says, hey, let's don't stop the clock anymore. They, uh, they've got this one in hand. 66 to 59, South Carolina wins it. So here is the look at the bracket as we head to the championship game, 9 o'clock Eastern on Thursday evening. It'll be the Memphis Tigers one-point winner over Temple tonight. And South Carolina, who wins it, by seven over Syracuse. Our final score again is South Carolina 66, Syracuse 59. Sports Center coming up next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. So long, everybody, from New York City.